Sunday School Lesson Review. Welcome to the Sunday School Lesson Review hosted by the pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church, Brother Lars Jordan. The subject of this week's lesson is the widow and the unjust judge. The scripture reading is coming from Luke, 18th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Please, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. After you click the subscribe button, make sure you click the notification bell for future lessons. Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday School lesson for July the 15th, 2018 is The Widow and the Unjust Judge. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 8. And in our lesson, we are still dealing with this area of study justice in the New Testament. And our quarter, our, our monthly theme is Jesus calls for justice and mercy. And as we've been going through this, this thing about justice and, and mercy and, and particularly justice in the New Testament, we, we find that justice or to judge rightly is to be guided by truth. It has the quality of being just and being true and righteous, that which is right, the right determination in this. And when we think about true justice, we have to think about God. And we uh, he's also equitable. In, in other words, justice in the New Testament, when we see God and we see Jesus being uh, also being given the authority to judge, his judgment is fair and impartial. Now, he didn't come the first time in, in our lesson today as the as the judge, but he said if he did judge, his judgment would be would be true because of his link to his father. So his judgment is reasonable in in other words. And in administering justice, as we've been going through on a weekly basis, if we were administering justice even in the secular courtroom, if that, that justice was coming down, we would stand before the judge, and part of that judgment, or administering the justice or judgment, part of it would be a, a condemnation or to some type of punishment, some type of way, sentenced to this many years in prison, or even the worst, sentenced to death. And, but sometimes the judgment would be great or a reward. A person is declared not guilty. Now, standing in the courtroom of spirituality, man knows because of our link to Adam, we came down through the years, but a few days in full of trouble, Job said. So we, we all have a sin nature. So we've all already messed up and we all already stand before the righteous judge the wages of sin is death. We stand there already condemned and convicted by our own actions, but the gift of God is eternal life, Paul said there in Romans 6 and 23. So the reward when we stand there with God, the righteous judge, the reasonable judge, the judge that is guided by truth, the truth being the propitiation, satisfaction of God's righteous wrath upon his son, Jesus Christ, satisfied God's, that the wrath of God, and uh, substitutionarily took away our sin debt totally and completely. So we are not punished, we are as believers, but rewarded and declared not guilty, declared just, ju just and righteous only because of what Jesus Christ did. And that comes by his amazing grace. And as we go through this particular lesson today, the widow and the unjust judge, we have a few things that we we must talk about. This would this would be a thing where we would call it a parable. Or uh, uh the Greek word is parabolo. Uh, to uh uh para means beside and balo where we get our our English word ball means to cast it 
Uh, and so the word put together is cast beside, cast down beside this. Our uh, parable is a comparison, uh, illustration, or sometimes a contrast. It's totally different, even though it is portraying a particular message, definitely spiritual when Jesus is talking about it and looking forward to the kingdom of heaven. And when we think about a parable, I was a, a, a pipe fitter in the oil field. When you think about parables, something that is cast beside, that is totally in contrast of what it really is, I was a pipe fitter. And my best friend, when I was out there on the job, was a tape measure. The tape measure was not the piece of pipe, but it was something that reveals something about the pipe. That is what a parable does. It reveals something about the 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 teaching that Jesus is teaching here. It was something about the kingdom of heaven. Remember what started off this right here happened over in the 17th chapter. It started with, with the 20th verse of the 17th chapter. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So he went on, and this was a particular part where he was still answering that question and looking forward to this, and it does give us a powerful teaching on prayer. But it was Sherlock Holmes that coined the statement, elementary, my dear Watson. He would say such a thing, and he would go into how something that the rest of us may not have seen, but he and Watson would see it right off the bat. Dr. Watson seemed sometimes to be smarter than, than Sherlock himself. So in keeping with that type of thing, let's do something that's kind of elementary with this lesson today, and it might give us a little bit better understanding of what's going on. Let's identify the characters in this lesson. One of the characters, we wouldn't even consider that, that to be a character. The first one would be the city. The city is not given a name, so it was just a particular city. It could be any city where you are, where you are going through something, some part of something, and it's some, some type of distress is coming up on you in this particular place. The place may not even be a city. It might just be a place where you are in your life, this particular area of your life, where you want to move out of this particular area of your life and get a, a better spiritual relationship with the Lord. It was a city. It, it, didn't, it wasn't given a, a name. It wasn't given anything special. The next character in our lesson today would be the judge. And sometimes when we look at this, this may be more about the judge when we look at the first part of it than anything else, than even about the widow, because the judge was the one that was that was going against. And remember, it started out in the 20th verse of the, of the, of the 17th chapter where the Pharisees were these people that felt like they were more religious and more spiritual than anybody else. So the judge in this place, he was a man, that, and it would be said in this lesson, that didn't fear God. So in the scripture, according to the scripture, a person that does not fear God is classified as a fool. You say, well, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Well, it was the preacher Solomon there in the first chapter of Proverbs when he, when he declared that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I know we like to go to the other scriptures where it say wisdom, but he said that the, the fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge. Knowledge, this is a judge. He's already obtained his degrees and everything else. But the last part of that verse says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wisdom and instruction comes from, from the Lord. Now, a fool in the Hebrew means that person is silly. In, in other words, having or showing lack of common sense or judgment for a judge, not to show common sense or even real true judgment, but that was the particular way of this, this man as we find him in our lesson today. And the third person that is mentioned in our lesson, the third character, is God himself. God himself. So we just talked about a judge, but look who is the real righteous judge. It was God. This is the God that this man did not fear. This was the God when this man looked at him, this man found himself in a classification of a fool because he did not revere God. He did not reverence God. He did not look to God, the one and only righteous judge. The third person, the third character in this is man. 
man that there at the end of verse two. He did not regard man. Man was was anybody. Man to him was insignificant. In in other words, he did not regard him. He did not care about him. He did not consider man. He only considered one person, and we'll find that that other person that he considered in in, in the the fourth verse. But still, he said here, man, man. This is not. So talking about the gender, this is anthropos in the Greek. This means man or woman, the human being. This is what it's talking about. He did not regard them. He did not care about them. That is the fourth person, uh, the fourth character in our lesson today. The fifth character would be the widow herself. She was a widow in indeed and also a widow in need. She was a widow. She was widowed because of the loss of her husband. She she was without because of the loss of her husband. So she was a true widow in in every sense of the word. Probably kind of poor and and left alone because of her condition and her situation because she did not have her husband anymore to look out for her and and at that time in in this particular lesson when these came about a woman was not regarded without the the help of or the aid of her husband that person that stood beside her or, or they stood beside one another but she was also a widow in need and that was the reason that she came to the judge for justice or even deliverance and protection from her situation and the fifth, sixth person or the sixth character in our lesson today would be the adversary the adversary in our situation in our spiritual lives today we might we might consider man being our adversary but we wrestle not the scripture says the apostle paul said against flesh and blood so our true adversary even when that person is annoyance to us that person is sticking us in the side has become a thorn in our flesh even though it seems that it is a person the apostle paul said i realize that it was a messenger sent from satan to buffet me so the real adversary is the devil himself. He is the true enemy. He is the adversary. So our lesson today starts out with, with the, the first verse here, going into and dealing with and, and recognizing our characters as we go through this. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not to faint. Jesus, doing this teaching, talking to them about end time teaching, some of it, some of it was relating to now times, but he was giving some eschatology in his teaching there after that started because they asked, when would the kingdom come? So he goes through several things and told the mentality and how people would be, how they would be just going about doing their daily things and one would be taken and another one would be left and these things would be happening as, as the kingdom of heaven is coming or the second coming of the Lord would happen is, is what he was talking about. But he gave this parable. Remember, we just told you what, what we said a parable was to throw something beside in contrast or comparison. It was an illustration of that thing, but not that particular thing. Remember, I told you the pipe and the tape measure were two different things, but the tape measure told something about the pipe, whether it was the length or the or the width of the pipe itself, it would give something, some description of it, but it wasn't a pipe. And so it, Jesus does that here he, in the parable unto them to this end, he, explaining and going to the end, giving them the end of what was going, what started out at the 20th verse of the 17th chapter. Okay, to this end, here we are, that men ought to always pray. No matter what you're going through, looking at this, looking at times, and you you may be fearful of things that are happening. You ought to always pray. Yeah, the Apostle Paul said there in First Thessalonians five and seventeen. He said, "Pray without ceasing. Prayer should always be something." Now, what does uh, the Apostle Paul and Jesus mean? They do not do not mean that you stay on your knees forever and ever. Amen. You don't ever get up off of your knees, or you walk and talk and always praying all day long. It means a lifestyle of prayer. It means that the, the first thing, the first person that you should seek in any situation is the 
Lord himself. It's a lifestyle of prayer. It's a, it's a prayer life. When, when you are asking the Lord to help me get this or, or obtain that, get you a job and pray alone while you're getting that job, while you're working, that the Lord will give you that. He may even show you that you don't really need that. It's something else that he wants you to have. But still, it's a lifestyle of prayer. We ought to always pray is what Jesus, what, what Jesus said here. Men ought to always pray, everybody, and not to faint. Faint is a little bit different. Praying is, is, is a type of, we, we look at prayer and we know that prayer is supplication. We know that part of prayer is supplication, which means to, to beg. We don't like that word, so we'll, we'll just say acts humbly or earnestly, but the, the Greek word means to beg, but, but still, we, we ask humbly and earnestly, Lord, I really uh, want to have this or really need this if it, it, if it is a true need. Or it can also, praying can also be worship. He inhabits the praises of his people. What some of us think when the scripture says that it means that, that we're always supposed to be lifting our hands and, and, and jumping around and, and shouting. But the praises of his people is when we come humbly before him and just communicate with him. Not necessarily always in supplication where we're asking for a particular thing or begging for something, but in a, in a way of just saying, Lord, I thank you. I love you. I really appreciate what you're doing in my life. And every day is with Jesus is better than the day before. When we pray, we are praising or worshiping God. Worshiping is also the word there to pray, which means to express the expression of reverence and adoration toward God. So, but we, ought, we shouldn't faint either. To faint is to become weary or even to fail. Well, how do we mean fail? We, we fail in heart, to give up. It looks like the Lord is never going to answer my prayer. That's what people, Jesus was talking about here. It, it would be so long that, that, that the Lord would come to, till he comes back or Jesus would, when the father would say, Jesus, it's time to go back. God is long suffering to us with, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. When God gives time, he's giving time for another person to come across and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and be totally saved forever and ever. Amen. So, so now to not faint in heart, don't give up is what he's saying there. Things are going to happen. Trials, tribulations, and persecution, and things like that. James talked about that in, in, in James 1 and, and, and 3 and 4. He said, know that the trying of your faith work in patience, but let patience have its perfect work so that you will be entire, lacking nothing. So when, we, when we're when we going through, let that faith have its perfect work. Don't give up. Don't faint in heart. Don't give up. Don't fail in heart. Saying there was a city, verse 2 said, there was a city, a judge, which feared not God, in a city, a judge would fear not God, neither regarded man. Now, we told you that, that the second person in this was the, the judge. The first character was the city. The city, not just, not, not a named city, just anywhere where you are or any condition you find yourself in, that's the place that you are at that time. But then there comes a judge. Look at the characteristic of this judge. It talked about him in a most powerful way, gave more information about him than just about anybody in the story in just a few words. It feared, he feared not God. We just told you that a person that feared the, 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 that doesn't fear God is classified, according to the scripture, as a fool, as a person that is, that is silly, a person that, is, that lacked common sense, and judgment. A person that doesn't regard God at all is, is a person that even though they have the degrees hanging on the wall, want everyone to know that they have become indoctrinated in this particular situation, but they lack common sense. They're not reasonable in their justice or their judgment. They don't, they don't regard God, so they, they really can't consider that person for real. They're just handing down justice maybe according to the book, but they never really looked at the, the humanistic side of the situation and the genuine love that a person should have for one another, genuine concern 
concern for the well-being of another is what the scripture would talk about when it talks about that love that is phileo. We are genuinely concerned. But this man, he feared not God, so he had no link to God. So he, 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 he wasn't a person that would do these type of things. He wouldn't judge in the right way because he lacked real judgment. He did not regard, did not fear God, neither regarded man. He did not fear the righteous judge, and he didn't regard man, or he didn't consider man, respect man. Man didn't mean anything to him. That was one person. There was three people that he talked about. One would be an, uh, would be an entire classification, but God, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The, the next would be man. The human race. He did not regard the human race. That was this man was totally selfish. Sounds like some of our politicians today say what got to be said, but in the end, it's all about me, myself, and I. But verse three says, and there was a widow in that city. That we, we said the widow was, was the fifth character in this. She was the one that was in need. She was the one that 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 was indeed a widow. She she had lost her husband, so she was definitely a widow, but she was in need of something. She said she, that was a widow that was in that city or sitting in her place or sitting in our place where we are, not not necessarily a particular uh, geographical lo location, but definitely a place where we find ourselves in, where it's a place where there is a place of being persecuted or suffering trials and tribulations and or persecution. These things, whatever it is, it's a place for us. She was in that city and she came to this man that feared not God. She came to him. This man that didn't regard God or man, did not fear God. He was classified, we said, as a fool. She came to him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. Now, the word avenge in the, in the Greek, it means to vindicate or even retaliate against that person uh, uh, or put vengeance on that person or even to punish that person for the way that they're treating me. But it also means to give me justice and protection from what that person is doing to me. So she came to him and said, avenge me of the sixth person of our list of char characters, the, the adversary. Now, it never told us who her real adversary was here. Her adversary was not given a particular name but it was an adversary. We find that our greatest adversary, we just told you as we were going through the list of char characteristics that we do not really wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against that man. They came and they were instruments of the adversary to come against us. Sometimes it's, 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 it's even within the, the closeness of our friends and family that, that come against us the most, but we're not wrestling against them. We're wrestling against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood is not the thing. It's principalities. It's spiritual wickedness in high places. It's the adversary. It's the ultimate en enemy. It's that thief that Jesus talked about in John 10 and 10. The, he cometh but to steal, kill, and and destroy. This is the adversary. This is the, the ultimate enemy is the adversary at this point. But she wants protection. She wants justice from this adversary. She said, avenge me of my adversaries. And he would not for a while. He didn't listen to her case. He didn't regard her for some for, for a period of time. He didn't give it consideration because he did not consider man. Remember, she was anthropos. She was a part of the human race. So just as he didn't consider God, he could he didn't consider man. So she was con considered with the, with man. So here she is for a while. He didn't even think do anything about it. He would not for a while. He would not avenge her of her adversary for a while. But look at ver the, the, the middle of verse 4. It says, but after what he said within himself. Here is the third character in this. We gave you God, the Father, Son, and the Spirit. We gave you the, the human being, Anthropos, man. He did not regard man. The woman was considered in, in that Anthropos as man. And the third person would be himself. 
Now, this is a person that he gave all respect and reverence. This is the person he cared more about. He was a selfish individual. So he, he, after what he said within himself, this uh, to himself, even at, at this point, though I fear not God, he, he, he actually acknowledged the fact that he was a fool. In, in in his life. He didn't fear God. He didn't care about the things of God, nor considered or regarded man. Though I don't uh, fear them, I will, uh, I'm the big person in this. <laughs> he, he has even placed himself above his, his caring about God, but he did acknowledge the fact that he didn't fear God, nor man. He didn't consider man. He said, but uh, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because, verse 5 says, this widow troubleth me. Back to me again. It's all about me. Because she troubleth me. Not because she acts and she's a part of the human race and, and I consider them because I don't consider them. Not because I care about God, but, but bothers me. So I put himself first again, me, myself, and I, I will avenge her. I will avenge her because it's all about me in my life is what he's saying here at this time. This judge, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. So this man, afterwards, in, in verse four, after what? After her consistency and her persistency, after that, he said, I will avenge her. I will deliver her from her 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 accuser or, or her punishers or, or this person that is coming against her in this type of way. I will give her justice and protection is what he's saying here. I will avenge her. Lest by her continuing to come, she annoy me. She was annoyance. That was an annoyance to him. Or even as one translation said, or she drive me crazy is, is what he was saying. Or uh, wear, wear me out in, in her persistence. Every day she shows up at my office, at the courtroom. She She's here on a daily basis. I can't get away from her. And unless she drives me crazy, I'll, I'll just go ahead and avenge her. For a while, it says there, verse 4, that he wouldn't do it. But now, because she was persistent. Now, here's the, the, the contrast starts here. Jesus said here in verse 6, he said, the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Now, he says, okay, well, okay, there is a lesson to learn from this. The tape measure is not the pipe, but it's telling you something about the pipe. So he says here that, now, let's see what, she, what, what the judge is teaching us in this, because this is a parable. This was not called just a story or an account. This is something that Jesus has cast beside to help us get an understanding. Let's see what the judge has to say. I'll see what we can learn from the judge is what he's saying there in verse 6. And shall not God avenge his own elect? He, he's, he's, he's giving God here as a contrast. God loves you. God cares for man. God really cares about man in, in every way. It, uh, he cares about the human side of things, anthropos. He, for God so loved the world that he gave. His love wouldn't save, so he gave what would take care of the sin debt. So here he says here, he, 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 said he cares. He avenges his elect. He gives them justice and protection from the, the enemy or even this man as legal protection. He gives them protection from his enemy to his own elect. Who is the elect? Everyone that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are now classified as elect, which cry day and night unto him, who makes our plea, crying and, and talking to the Lord and, and coming to him because Life just happens and things happen in our life and no one is on their own island separated from life itself. We all are dealing with things. We So so we come to him day and night crying. The Apostle Paul said, Abba, Father, which means Daddy, but just making it real personal. We come to him day and night, though he bear long with them. He's long suffering. Jesus intended to come and, and, and br bring the daughter of, of Jairus from the dead. 
But there was another situation that was going on that was going to help the faith of Jairus. So a woman comes through the crowd and presses her way and touches the hem of his garment there in, in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 8. And when that happens, the dialogue that he has with her, the daughter dies and they said, don't worry the master. But he came back and he brought this, this leader of the synagogue's daughter back to life as his faith was increased after he saw that that woman was healed after 12 years of suffering. So here, though he bear alone, God has a plan. He has a purpose. He will work it out. Don't become weary and faint in heart. Verse 8 says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. When he comes, he's going to work it all, all out. Jesus is talking again back to eschatology. When the Lord comes, all of these things will be worked out. They will be, be avenged, avenged or even at this time, uh, they, uh, they will get justice and protection even at our time now. But he said when he comes, it'll happen speedily when Jesus comes back to this, this earth. But even now, when we call upon the Lord, when he comes and works it out, when he sees that it's really time and he can be most reverence in it, he will come and fix it. But he asked this question at the end. He said, nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Faith on as this woman had in her persistency and consistency, will he find that type of faith or will he find people that have failed in heart, has given up? Now we're at a time where the Lord has us in his hand, but there will come a time when the Holy Spirit is not working the same way that he works now, where he is the sealer to the day of redemption in the end times. The Lord will at one time see and, and, and will close the four corners of the earth and seal those which have not been sealed since the great tribulation started. But now will the Lord find faith if he came right now. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we pray that you will help us to grasp something from this lesson today as we look at the list of characters and characteristics in this lesson, Lord. Help us to be people that are merciful and judge correctly and want to protect and, and bring people into the body of baptized believers. Father, we do pray today that you will search our hearts. Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.